Okay, so we're getting ready to build our filter so we can filter by multiple criteria, our list of patients, but we need to start creating a new store procedure. So let's quickly review how we can work in the tools in Visual Studio to do things like that. If I double click the database, it will bring up okay, the server explorer where I see a connection here. I see tables, views, store procedures, and so on. Let me just expand store procedures. I think I quickly showed you how you can go into table design and so on here as well. But let's just focus on the stored procedures for now. So here are all the stored procedures in the system. The one that's closest to what I need to do is already here. Patient select by doctor. Right? Basically that already has the filter for the doctor ID set up. I just need to add additional filters to it now. Right? So if I double click any of the stored procedures, watch what happens. It actually will open it okay, inside the uh, editor here. There's a little update link at the top or button you might say. So I could make changes to this stored procedure in here and apply those changes to the actual database just by clicking update. So if I wanted to make a, a, a different version altogether, maybe um, well, we know OHIP number, for example, is unique. This isn't actually <laughs> what I was about to do, but it occurred to me just to show you working with the tool. Right? Suppose we wanted to add a new stored procedure uh, where we're going to select by one patient, because we know OHIP is also unique, just like the primary key is, where we pass the OHIP number. Right? Well, then we would probably make a new procedure, and all I have to do is change the name. Then when I do update, it will actually generate a create script instead of an update, alter script, right? So update, sorry, USP patient select by OHIP, right? So my parameter would be the OHIP number, the data type for my OHIP, it's a uh, char 10 or var char 10, but we always use var for parameters, var char 10. So if I pass in an OHIP number, right, it's a var char, then I can return the same data based on the OHIP. So instead of doctor ID, I'm now going to filter for the one OHIP number equaling OHIP. Huh. OHIP. Okay. Or, and here's where the logic comes in or my OHIP parameter equals an appropriate flag value. Now a value of zero probably isn't the best choice here. This is, this is a string, right? So probably just something like an empty string would do. Or I could actually, you know, come up with an appropriate value that would work. But I think in this case an empty string would probably do fine. I'm not going to take this example too far. I just want to show you that we can update an existing stored procedure and create new ones. If I click the update, notice that what it does, it prepares a script. So this tool writes the script to make the modifications we've done interactively here. If I click update database, it will just go and apply it. But notice what happens if I click generate script. Okay, what we actually get is an entire script with all this stuff set up here, right, uh, to set different modes. Um, we're actually creating a temporary table to store errors. We're, uh, notice that we're doing set exacto board on. We're doing this as a transaction with a transaction isolation level set. So very, very precise, uh, professionally written code, which we didn't have to write ourselves, okay. There's our actual create procedure command. And notice that we check for different errors and so on. And if we uh, uh, need to, we'll roll back the transaction, okay, for different reasons and so on. And away we go. So lots of code gets executed. I can just click that and we'll actually do it. Oh, I probably had something. There we go. I had some text selected. <laughs> you remember what that's like. There we go. Transaction portion of the database updated successful. <laughs> so we made a new stored procedure over here, right? Refresh, and away we go. Okay, so that's just showing you how this works, how the whole tool, OK, 
okay, can get its job done. So let's start again, but this time we're going to actually do the one we need in our case. So I'll start with my select by doctor because this is exactly what I want. I want to do this already, okay, but I'm not done, okay. So as per our, our discussion in our PowerPoint, I'm going to add a, now we're looking for the, in the last name, right. So maybe I'll call it last name. And if I'm not sure, I could check my data type. I think it's a bar char 50. But we'll set it equal to an empty string okay, as a default value. right? So that's good for that. Then all we need to do is down here in the where clause, we'll say and, because we want to add our filters together, Last name is like. Now we said this is going to be a starts with, so I'll go at last name. Concatenated to my wildcard percent symbol. Now it's not the end of the world, but when I start doing this with the and. I'll often start actually putting brackets around each clause of this Boolean expression. I think of it like mathematics. It's just clarifying for the I as much as anything else, sort of the order of operations. Each of these is one logical test, right? So that has to be true, and this has to be true for any results to be returned, right? If we pass an empty string for the last name, then basically it's just going to look for wildcard character right, because that'll be an empty string, and, but it can concatenate an empty string with no problem, and away we go. All right, so let me update this. This time I don't need to look at the script. I'll just say update database. There we go, and just double check my uh, feedback down here. Okay, completed correctly, no errors, away we go. We're happy. Let's just refresh this. There we are. So now I have my, oh, shoot, I didn't change the name, so it did an update. Darn, Arr. Uh I know it's probably a bad habit, but it's one I picked up all, when I, you know, X often stands for unknown things, so I often go select by X, because I don't know how many filters I'm eventually gonna have here, right? So let me just do that. So that'll create the procedure with that name. I didn't mean to replace my old select by doctor, but that's okay. For the demo, it won't matter. So select by X is now there, right? So what I'm gonna do, let's come back to our actual page. I'm gonna change, now I'm ready to actually run the configuration on my data source for the grid. Okay, same connection string. We'll specify SQL, but I'm gonna use for selecting my select by X. And by the way, uh, I basically want to remove these. And this is the easiest way to just remove them. Because we aren't going to do any insert, update, or delete on this page. It's just a filtered report, you might say. We're only going to select by multiple criteria. But now look what we have. We have parameters for both, right? So doctor ID is already set, because I had that done earlier. Yahoo, okay, my drop-down list with a flag value of zero. For the last name, though, I'll pull that again from a control, in this case, my TXT last name filter. That's the text box I just added, right? Default value, nothing. But here's where I need to make that one change we talked about in our PowerPoint. I have to show advanced properties. And here we have convert empty string to null. Well, no, we want to leave it as an empty string. So we have to set that to false. Otherwise, this won't work. I can hide the advanced properties if I want to go back. Okay, it's just a toggle that switches the view. All right, so that's good. So if I, I don't usually test the query so much anymore. Sometimes it's a little fussy. Uh, let's just try it like that. Okay, we didn't get anybody. It's because it didn't properly pass the value, but it will work when we come to actually use it. Okay. All right, so um, we can see all the data. I probably want to get rid of some of it. Let me just come over here and uh, 
edit columns. No need to show that. I'm going to use the summary so I don't need the separate first and last name. And I don't need the doctor ID. Remember, I'm not editing through here. I don't have to worry about foreign keys or anything. I'm just showing data, right? So this is probably all the data I really need to show. If I had more time, I'd clean up the headings, but that doesn't really matter. Okay. So we're almost ready to test it, but of course, obviously, I'm going to need a, a button to click to actually apply the filter, right? So maybe we'll just press enter. We'll come back to our toolbox. I'll add a button. button filter and I'll just change the text property to filter okay now we're ready to test it out all right are you ready for filled with excitement oh wrong page <laughs> because I set that as the start page so it uh, defaults mm -hmm. to that. So it is my dynamic patient with filter. So I'll set that as the start page. So that's the one that will come up. Okay. All right. So I have a message telling me something helpful. Oh, it's because I copied and pasted. And so the uh, data source is still looking for commands. Okay. I probably should have just created the data source from scratch for what it's going to do for me. In fact, that might be even quicker. So I'll just add a data source again. Quicker than trying to fix it. Right? need our one store procedure select by X our two parameters the drop-down list here we need our text box so remember to set our convert empty string to null to false okay Let's try that again. Okay, so I'm seeing records. Now, let's see if I select uh, Doogie Hauser, for example. Click my filter button. There we go. So I'm still filtering for that. Uh, let's go back to all doctors. That's working. Now let's try our new last name starts with. Okay. Uh, well, obviously, I got a couple of Fs. So you just put in the letter F, filter, and there we go. So only the people with the last name starting with F are now showing up. R. If I just empty it, that essentially gives me all of them back. Because that's how we set up that if it's empty, instead of null, it passes an empty string. That's our flag, is an empty string. So as long as we get an empty string, it essentially doesn't filter by starting with anything for the last name. All right, so success. One thing you probably know, it might be nice to have a clear button. Okay, that's probably quick and easy that we can do that in just a matter of moments. Uh, I'll just add another button here. Put change the text so it says clear on the label of it or on the caption. BTN clear. And for the event, the click event, we're going to do the same code we've done before. That is, whenever we want to start fresh on a page, response.redirect, right? And then just ask for the name of the page back again, and you're good. What's the name of the page? It's a big, long thing. <laughs> Why did I make it so big? Rename. Okay. dot aspx. 
So I'll just ask for a fresh copy of it. So that'll, that'll essentially clear it because it puts everything back as it came up at first. All right. How are we for time? Do you want to take a quick break? And then we'll continue on with our date range and so on afterwards? Okay, let's do that. <laughs> 